one of the most common things that people say uh, is that at some point in their life, usually early on, somebody has told them that they have a horrible voice or they, some, had, they have a negative story about their voice in some way. So I wanted to sort of try and dig into how people feel about their voice. Polyphony is a sound installation made up entirely of 32 people's voices that we interviewed. There are 32 speakers uh, within frames and you are free to explore and wander and linger around those different frames and listen to the soundscape sort of unfold around you. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there are moments where you can lean in and hear particular voices telling a particular story and then there are moments where the piece is uh, more curated and it will zip about you and you can just enjoy it, yeah, buzzing around your head. I think sometimes when I've been in dark places myself, I can forget sometimes like how magical and beautiful this gift is that I have within myself and I can absolutely guarantee that if I do open my mouth and start to sing, it's going to make me feel better every single time. So we had over 100 hours worth of audio at the end of all those interviews, thinking about their own voices. They could re reflect on that politically or emotionally um, or musically, however they wanted. One thing that I was particularly interested in was the minutiae, all of the wonderful, beautiful noises that people make when they speak or when they sing. So the ums, the errs, the swallows, the glottal pops, the vocal fries, all of the teeny tiny minutiae uh, that usually is sort of the extraneous sound that gets put in the bin. I worked with a composer, Yaz Clark. So after all of the splicing and dicing had happened, we had all these beautiful teeny tiny sounds. Uh, we sat down and thought about how we could make shapes, different musical shapes from that. For example, all of the yeses, or we took all of the ums, or lots of different people breathing, or lots of different people faffing. I really wanted to hone in on all of that beautiful detail because it's uh, you really quickly get to the truth of a human when you listen to all of those lovely things. We then zoom into moments where we are actually getting lots of different uh, reflections on and opinions about how people feel about their voice. So tiny moments of that, and then you get zipped into another world. So it does sort of take you into lots of different qualities of, and textures of sound. Some speech, some song, some more abstract noise moves around. Um. <laughs> you can keep active throughout the whole thing. You can wander around and pass each speaker. Um, there are also chairs dotted around the room and you are welcome to pick up one of those chairs and find an area that you would like to sit in and go and plonk yourself there and have a listen. Because everywhere you sit, you will hear a different composition. You'll be able to hear it differently. Yeah, so exploring is very welcomed. And, and we both do that together. And there's no particular tune to it, but but it was just really comforting. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think polyphony was a little bit born out of a desperation for connection um, with people uh, and their voice. How could I find a way to be close to people's voices, basically, um, in a time where that just wasn't possible, wasn't, yeah, legal at times, I suppose. Mm.